In the wasteland that scars the center of the city, a rescue team begins to probe a great pile of debris. Their scoop is effective. No one's checked this place before. But there's too much to do in Karaman Marash. If you hear me, tap on the wall. No, no one. In a city where tens of thousands sleep outside, the authorities need to clear the rubble. But there is a conflicting demand to search for survivors. At the Elbra apartment block, a multinational rescue team had located a woman called Layla deep beneath the pile. And they'd been working all night to release her. They just called for silence. Ah, there we go, there's another one. The last time they did this, they could hear her. They could hear this woman, Layla. OK, they've been told to go back to work. And, and they do seem to be picking up the pace now. They had little choice. The temperature was dropping. An Italian volunteer told us they were running out of time. We start to call her. She answered to us. She answered, yeah. yeah she answered to us. And uh, she gave uh, she give answer. But the voice was, was very far and uh, mm -hmm. not very strong because, uh, you know, after four days, she, she was weak. weak. Yeah. Very weak. But word had spread about another emergency. Just around the corner, a man had been located in the remains of an 11 story block and we found a small group standing under the teeth of a digger's bucket. The driver heard a sound in the rubble and decided to stop his machine. A man called Gurkhan emerged from the rubble. His feet were blistered and his face was lacerated, but he had managed to survive more than four days underground. God is great, shouted the crowd. Some said they'd seen a miracle. The diggers returned to their concrete heaps, while the rescue team at the Elbra block looked for Layla. But they told us there'd been a development. Layla's voice may have belonged to her son, the pair lying together in the boy's room. We are working really, really hard to get to the boy. The team got to a point where they are on the other side of the wall, but with, between them, there is a wall that they can't cut because it's part of the structure. And a washing machine, you can't cut through the washing machine, you can't cut through the beam. So they currently know where he is. But yet, it's gonna take a lot of time. The operation was dangerous, the tunnel at risk of collapse. But the team managed to reach the boy. His name is Ridvan. <laughs> Layla's nine-year-old son. <laughs> the volunteers called for quiet, for fear of alarming the boy. And Ridvan was greeted to the sound of whispers. He'd spent nearly five days underground in the arms of his mother, and he was cold and badly dehydrated. The paramedics sped him to hospital. We spoke to Ridvan's uncle. Annesini bekliyoruz. Şimdi onu almadan biz şu anda rahat edemiyoruz. Anlatabiliyor muyum? Şimdi konuşma çok sevinemiyorum ben. Onu da alırsak o zaman mutlu olacağız inşallah. Tamam. O zaman hep beraber sevineceğiz inşallah. Go, go, go. The rescue took 24 hours and Ridvan is now in a stable condition. Unfortunately, his mother Leila had died, holding her son until the end. A national catastrophe and a family's tragedy in a city marked by sorrow. John Sparks, Sky News, in Karaman Marash.